Welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. On today's video, I'm smoking up some competition style ribs on my pit barrel cooker. Stay tuned. All right, so what we're starting with is a full rack of spare ribs right here. And I'm gonna trim this down into a St. Louis cut, uh, more for a competition style, if you will. So what I like to do is just count one, two, one, two, three. The fourth bone in is usually your longest bone, and I wanna go probably an inch above that, okay? So that's around right here. And what I like to do first is get a knife, a nice sharp knife, and draw an imaginary line at first, okay? Because you can't go back once you cut it. So about an inch above the fourth bone, just try to draw a straight imaginary line. And then take a step back and look at it. And I think that's pretty straight. So I'm just using a, a nice sharp chef's knife and keep the back of that knife right at that line that you just drew. And it helps to start with a nice sharp knife. So, okay. I'm gonna trim this off anyway, just like that. Okay, now I don't like to toss this away. This is still a lot of good meat. I'm actually gonna cook this along with these racks of, or this rack of ribs. So I'm just gonna set this aside for now. Over here on this side, all right. All right, so there we, we have a nice looking rack so far. And the other thing is you'll have this loose hanging meat over here. What I like to do, there's a small bone right around here. So I just like to square that off. Leave the meat on there. Try to leave the meat on there. Right here. Nice and straight. Okay, I'm gonna cook that little piece as well. Okay. Then you want to take a look at it. Okay, this is hanging off the edge. So this is the skirt right here. A lot of people refer to it as a skirt. So I'm just going to take that off. I like to pass my knife through the middle, and then come across, then come across this way here. That I'll toss. I'll toss that in the trash. At this point, I'll go ahead and take off some of the heavier fat that I can see hanging here. I am wearing a cut glove under my rubber glove here that way if I nick myself I'm protected so that looks good there this side looks good got a little bit a little bit of fat here you just got to be careful that you don't start to gouge into the rib too much because that, that'll affect the overall appearance of your rib okay just clean it up a little bit so on this side you have this heavier fat, okay? And I'm just gonna trim, trim that off and trim a little bit more of this fat off. You can see I've got some silver skin under here. So for this, I like to use my fillet knife. And just glide your knife right on top of that silver skin. Okay. Let's actually dig under it a little bit. That'll get us started. And then just take off the silver skin. Okay. Now in a competition, you wanna make sure you take most of this off. Sometimes your rub won't stick to that silver skin as good as it should if you take it off. I'm just going to pick the, pick the rack up to like this and just glide my knife right under that silver skin. A little bit more here. Okay, now this has a gouge in it. Okay, and that's something that the butcher did. But again, this isn't an actual competition. I'm just showing you roughly what a competition trim looks like. A little bit more of this fat. Just 
just like that. Looking good. Last thing is to remove this membrane off the back of the ribs. And I like to use a paper towel. And if you're lucky, it'll come off in one, one pass. If you're not, it comes off in chunks. Either way, ah, got lucky. Just have a little tiny piece here. There it is. Okay, so that's looking good. At this point, actually, let me take some of this membrane off here too. There we go. All right. So at this point, it's time to go ahead and rub your rack of ribs. Get my knives out of the way. And the rubs that I'm using today are from Cosmos Q. So I've had these rubs for a long time and I've never used them, so I'm gonna use them today. And the reason for it is Cosmo came out with this OPX1 um, barbecue sauce that's supposed to be good for ribs and competitions and stuff. So I'm gonna put this sauce to the test and I think that there's nothing better than to go ahead and use his rubs as well. So the first rub that I'm using is this one here. It's called a sweet uh, honey pecan. And then the second rub that I'm using is his hot, uh, uh, hot dirty bird, or he calls it dirty bird hot as well. So I'm gonna use that as my second layer. So the first layer, I'm just gonna do the back first. Come on, there we go. Now, I'm not familiar with these rubs, so I don't know if they're salty or terribly salty. I, don't, I wouldn't think they are because of the sweetness or the honey name on this rub. Okay. Then my second layer, again, is going to be this hot Dirty Bird or Dirty Bird Hot. I'm going to give this a good coating. I think if this is salty, the sweetness from the other honey rub is definitely going to balance that out. Okay, let's go ahead and press it down. Just like that. Take this little piece off. There we go. And then go ahead and do the top side. Give it a good coating. There we go. As I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna be smoking these ribs in my pit barrel cooker. You know, I had my pit barrel cooker for a while and I don't use it a whole lot. I keep it nice and covered in my backyard. And I saw it this morning and I said, you know what? It's been a while since I've cooked on it. I'm gonna cook on it today. That thing is a smoking cooking machine. So pretty excited about that. Since I'm only cooking one rack, I'm not gonna hang this rack. I'm just gonna place it on the top grate. So there we go. We're gonna let this sweat for probably 15 minutes. Meanwhile, let's go outside and start up the pit barrel cooker. Stay tuned. All right, we're outside at my pit barrel cooker. And today I am using Fogo's premium lump charcoal. And I did start this with one of their Fogo starters right in the middle of the charcoal that you can see there. Hopefully you guys can see that. So I'll wait till it's ashed over probably four, five, six inches around the center. At that point, I'll put my grate on, put the rods in, put the lid on, let it come up to temperature. Then I will put my rack of ribs on there. So stay tuned. All right, so it's been 20 minutes since I first lit the charcoal and the pit came up to temperature. I do have a gauge on my lid, uh, which I'll show you here in a minute. But number one is I'm impressed with how these ribs have sweated out. A real nice shiny red color. You can see I have the uh, pieces that I trimmed off, the rib tips as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rods back in there as this is part of the ventilation system. So go ahead and put both rods on there. Grab my lid. Here's the gauge that I was talking about. And before I open the lid, the temperature was right at 275. So pretty neat to see the, uh, the uh, temperature really falling into place where I like to cook my ribs again. It was at 275, so that's what we're looking at. We probably won't open this for about an hour and 20 minutes, so stay tuned. All right, so we're at the one and a half hour mark now. 
and my ribs are ready to be wrapped. And I didn't have to spritz, believe it or not. Um, these ribs are staying pretty moist. So I got some butter, some brown sugar, some honey. Just lay the ribs on top of that. Man, look at this color. And this pit, uh, pit barrel is doing a really nice job of, of cooking this. It's not burnt or anything. I mean, I, it's nice and cooked. I can tell you that the, um, that the surface of the top was a little bubbly. So I know this thing is cooking nicely. So a little bit of butter. As far as the extra pieces that I have, the uh, rib tips and stuff, I'm not even going to worry about wrapping those. I'm just going to cook those 100% in the smoke. So I've got my butter, a little bit of brown sugar. Just like that. And a little bit of honey. Just like that. Okay. Now I do have some apple juice, but I want to make sure I get these wrapped first. Just like this. Fold one end over. Fold the other end over. I like to twist my foil and lay it flat. Then at this point, lift up your rack on one end, just like this, and go ahead and dump your juice. I like to use pineapple juice, but this time I'm using apple juice. That's what I had laying around. So, just like that. Lift it up so it goes all the way on the other side of the ribs. Twist it, lay it down. I like to double wrap my ribs as well. That way if one of the bones punctures the foil, um, or if I puncture a hole laying it back on the grates, I'm protected. Well, the ribs are protected. Just like that. So these are going to go back in the pit barrel cooker for probably another hour with a meat side down. So stay tuned. Alright, so it's been an hour since we put the ribs in the foil. So total cooking right now is at two and a half hours. And the temperature is at 275 on my gauge. So right where I want to be the entire time. Getting a little bit windy out here. But these are the little rib pieces and those are looking pretty good too. Oh yeah, perfect. So at this point, it's just uh, our goal here is to get these ribs out of the foil and put them back on the rack. For probably 20 minutes or so. We should have some decent pullback, but once you put them back on the rack, you'll get a little bit more pullback. Oh yeah. These suckers are looking good. Now you gotta be real careful because these are tender, so don't want to break them. There we go, look at that color. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's get this foil out of here with all these juices. And let's take a look at these ribs here. Oh yeah. Now those are gonna firm up a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and leave them uncovered for probably 20, maybe even 30 minutes. So at that point, I'll bring you guys back. So stay tuned. All right, so it's been 30 minutes since I took the ribs out of the foil. Oh yeah, they're looking good. Take these rods off. Just like that. And again, these are the end pieces that are still smoking in here. And these will continue to stay in there for a little bit longer. So, all right, so let's sauce these ribs. Got some nice pullback here. And I got my sauce. Again, this is the Cosmos Q OPX1, and this is warmed up. So we're just gonna sauce the back of them first. Oh, we'll sauce the back of your ribs. You know, I tasted this sauce right out of the bottle, and it's pretty darn good, I gotta tell you. It's really good. So there we go, get the bones, get every inch of meat here. There we go. So at this point, go ahead and turn them. 
just like that. Let's sauce the top of them. Man, the sauce is hitting the coals here on the bottom, and it smells delicious. Crazy how good this smells right now. I really miss cooking on this pit barrel cooker. There we go. So as far as the color, I got a really nice dark red color. Let's see, make sure you guys can see that. Yeah, you have a really nice color. I'm really happy with this color. Get the bones. All right, what you don't want in the competition is these blotches that you can see here. Is the sauce that how it kind of blotches there. You don't want any of that where it pools. I'm trying to brush it this way, see if that helps a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, it looks like a glazed candy apple right there. So going to leave them in the uh, pit barrel for another 10 minutes. We'll come back and pull them off, so stay tuned. All right, so our ribs are ready, and they only sat in the smoke for another 10 minutes after I sauced them. So got some really nice pullback, beautiful color as well. So I'm going to go ahead and slice these. Now, this is a little trick that my buddy Chris showed me in competitions. Obviously, it's a, I think it's a little easier to flip your rack and cut it from the bone side. So what we like to do is lay a little bit of the sauce on the cutting board, just like this. And what this is going to do is really going to create a a pad for your ribs so the so the um, sauce doesn't uh, rub off. So here we go. So at this point, you can see your bones a little bit clearer. Okay, I'm going to grab my knife, my slicing knife. I'm just going to cut a couple of these ribs here and try to get the the trick of this is to try to get the majority of your meat. On a few bones so I'm gonna go after this one which is the fourth bone in which is the longest one you can see it's medium both sides so I want to cut them both sides actually this one over here is pretty good too so I'm gonna slice it right in the middle just like this nice and straight this one as well I can see the bone here bone here meat here Alright, so let's take a look. Look at that. So, because we flipped them over on the sauce, the uh, sauce really doesn't get uh, disrupted. Now, if you have to brush a little bit more sauce, just be careful with it. Go ahead and brush the top. Just like this. Man, this is a beautiful rib, guys. Look at that. That in a competition box, I gotta tell you, you probably clean up the sauce that, that rubbed off the side there, that ran off the side. But look at that. That is a good looking rib. This rib in a, in a rib box would be wonderful. So I'm gonna slice a couple more and uh, we'll give these a taste. Stay tuned. All right, so I was able to get seven nice ribs out of that rack. And that's about right on a rack of ribs in a competition. So that's why. A lot of competitors will cook multiple ri uh, racks of ribs, uh, two, maybe three, sometimes maybe four, just to get the ideal uh, cut uh, ribs. So again, seven bones here that I was able to get. And I got to tell you, uh, from an appearance standpoint, these ribs look awesome, nice and red. Now they're a little wavy on the top, and I think that's because of the, the fat that was in there. So this is a you know, different different rib, but you know, still good looking rib. So let's give it a, a taste here. Mmm, man, that is really tasty. Give us another bite here. As far as from a bite through standpoint, <laughs> it's definitely there. Man, that's a good rib. That is a really good rib. <clears throat> that fogo charcoal really left a, uh, left a nice flavor on these ribs. So I will tell you this. You know, one of the little end pieces 
from the trimmings, but they had nothing but rub, that was really salty, okay, extremely salty. So I was a little worried, but because this rack went into that bath with the butter and the brown sugar and the honey and the apple juice, I think it, it, it killed a lot of that saltiness, which is excellent. So the rib, I'm gonna tell you, this is probably in my top five ribs that I've ever had. Um, Flavor-wise, this sauce is pretty damn good. Um, the rubs by themselves are really good. So if I was gonna do this again and not sauce them, I would use less rub because again, I'm not familiar with these rubs. I've never used them before. So from a competition standpoint, are these rubs competition worthy? Absolutely, by, by, by far. They're a little bit salty, so I would definitely use less than what I normally would when I use the Victory Lane rubs, but these are pretty darn good. But this sauce is amazing. I will definitely be buying some more of this stuff. Um, not sure if they sell it in gallons. I know that, that Cosmo does sell it in, in, in cases, but this stuff is pretty good. Um, it, it reminds me of Blues Hog, the champion uh, blend that Blues Hog makes. Um, it's a lot like that, but this one is, is a little bit more savior, not as sweet as that Blue, uh, Blues Hog champions blend. So I give this, this sauce combination, the rub combination and the sauce combination, two thumbs up uh, from a competition standpoint. It produced an amazing rib. So give this a shot, absolutely good stuff. Thanks for watching. If this is your first time here, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Till next time, Joe Smoking, Joe's Pit Barbecue. See ya.